Before we get started, let's get something out of the way. There's been an uptick in creators pushing for cons and weapons on characters, saying certain characters needed for the Abyss, doing specific R5 showcases, and claiming the meta has drastically changed. All of this started as just advertising from a small group of creators and then trickled down through other parts of the community. Advertising a product is fine, but you have to disclose the fact that you're advertising it. If they won't, the least I can do is tell y'all to be careful out there. We have a lot of new exciting units, but the fact that you shouldn't pull for characters, cons, or weapons unless you really like the character hasn't changed. Also, what's currently meta is dependent on the enemies in Abyss. There's no old meta to be replaced. It's always evolving. Certain teams will always excel at certain types of content. And new Fontaine mechanics and characters has done nothing to change that. Now that that's out of the way, if you have or plan to get Farina before her banner ends, here's 5 plus teams you might want to try out with explanations of how her kit works in those teams and the synergy she has with the characters in them. I was originally going to do 10, but I got pneumonia and haven't recovered enough to do a 45 minute video in a week, plus some of Farina's teams just don't do well in this abyss. Number 5, Babysitter. It's like Farina took all the kids to a petting zoo. Look at the little rascals chasing after the cute animals. This team uses Nahida, Farina, Dory, and Sayu. While Farina doesn't buff the damage of transformative reactions like Hyper Bloom, Electro Charge, or Swirl, she does still buff the base damage of the attacks that cause them, including when they aggravate and spread. And the combination of Dory and Sayu will make sure we cap her stacks and get as many of those aggravates and spreads as possible. While it is true that Farina does bring new life to non-reaction focused teams, the idea that the meta is moving away from reaction focused teams because of that is at best misguided and at worst another deceptive marketing tactic. Farina has 100% uptime on her Hydra application, it isn't tied down to normal attacks, and you don't have to stand in one place. That makes her very versatile as both a reaction trigger and enabler. In this team, we're going to have Nahida on deep wood with EM, EM, or Dendro crit with an EM or crit weapon. Farina's team wide damage bonus has done something incredible. It's made a pretty strong case for not running a damage percent goblet. That's great news for attack, death, and HP scaling characters because it's going to be easier to get one of those with good substats than it is to get their corresponding damage percent goblet with good substats. It's also great news for me because I don't have to explain how Nahida's burst scales off the party member with the highest EM, which there will generally be another character built triple EM with an EM weapon in Nahida's teams. So there's really no benefit normally for stacking EM on Nahida instead of focusing on her damage. But here I am doing it anyway. Luckily, Farina gives a massive amount of damage percent so there's even more of a case to run an EM goblet now. Dory is going to be on 4 piece gilded, triple EM with the fab or sack sword. You're going to be hearing me say fab a lot here because a lot of Farina's teams are very energy hungry. Remember when running fab to try to get a decent amount of crit rate if you actually want the extra particles. Dory's job here is just to self apply electro and heal a tiny bit. So it doesn't even have to be a super high level sword. Ideally it would be, but you might understand why there might be a need for a compromise in a bit. A bit of VR is great, but what we're really looking for here are those extra particles. Zayu will also be on Triple EM, but she'll be on VV to shred Hydro and Electro Res. Also, Fav Greatsword. See, I told you you'd see why we might need to compromise. Zayu is going to be taking up a lot of field time and is going to be hitting a lot, meaning you can get away with less crit rate while still consistently proccing Fav to meet your team's energy needs. Dory's burst will cause her to infuse Electro when Sayu goes supersonic. I'm sure you're probably tired of hearing this, but Golden Troop for Farina, HP HP crit. It's just too good on her not to use if you have it. If you don't, first, probably get on that. Second, you can use Tenacity in the meantime. You can still run HP HP crit, but without Golden Troop and with the HP bonus from Tenacity, a Hydro Goblet will still be fine. Her weapon options really depend on the team, but you can figure out what's best by asking a few questions. Are there other Hydro teammates to funnel her particles? If so, you might be able to get away with running a damage focused weapon like her signature, Jade Cutter, or Wolfang. And yes, Wolfang does work with Farina, 
skill before her burst, the game doesn't stop while you're in the animation. Her pets will be building stacks during it. If so, but not enough, or if in a team that either runs multiple fabs or generates a lot of particles, her tried and true option is the pipe. If your team is an energy black hole, just run fav. You really can't go wrong with it. The artifacts and weapons for Farina are going to be the same for every team here. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to say Farina is Farina from this point onward. Now for rotations. Keep in mind these aren't necessarily the most optimal rotations. They're more of a one size fits all plug and play to get you started with the teams. Start with Nahida's burst and tag all the enemies with their skill. And then Farina's skill and burst. Dory's skill and burst. Make sure to stay on her long enough to catch the particles. And then Sayu burst and hold her skill while you supersonic spin dash through all the baddies until Dory's burst ends. And repeat. This one's pretty smooth brain. You only need to activate a few brain cells to make sure you catch Dory's particles on her and to know when to stop zooming. The team functions well enough on both sides, but it will definitely do better in some chambers than in others. Number four, Taser, Farina, Lynette, Fischl, Kokomi. Note there are a lot of other options for Taser with Farina. This is just the one we're going with. Farina's Farina, on to Lynette. You can really take your pick between an EMVV build or an attack attack or damage percent crit build here. Note, she ascends damage percent, so that plus Farina plus Goblet is kind of a bit much. The more enemies there are, the better EM becomes by comparison. But Lynette's scalings are actually kind of busted, especially considering her burst lasts for 12 seconds, longer than any other animal character. For weapons, EM weapon for the EM build, a damage weapon for the damage build. You've been lied to, ER weapons are a trap on Lynette. She's got a relatively high cusp burst, yes, but she also catches her own particles. Add on to that that there's a free to play weapon that essentially lowers the cost of her burst to 58, as little as 46 with C4, and that she's practically attached to the hip official, getting to 140 to 150 ER through subs should be really comfy with most weapons, and even less with Aminoma. Oh, and despite what you may have heard, Lynette does have grouping. Her C1 is meant to push enemies into her taunt, where they will happily remain throughout its duration. Some people might tell you Farina finally made Lynette good. Nah, it's like Lisa, they just didn't give her the time of day until Dendro came out. However, she does have some awesome synergy with Farina. You probably heard a lot about front loading healing with Farina to build stacks. Basically, when a character's HP changes, every percent it changes gives one fanfare stack. At burst level 10, it takes roughly four stacks to get 1% damage bonus. So if you want to get as much of a boost as possible, you want to change your HP a lot right after casting it. But what if I told you healing wasn't the only way to do it? Well, it heals herself for 25% of her max HP and then drains 6% of her current HP every second for the next four seconds. Lost HP on top of HP drained by Farina once you swap to your healer. Always remember Farina doesn't care if it comes from healing or losing HP. If it changes by 1%, it's a stack. Technically, you could put a level one character in the team and let them get murked and it'd be 100 stacks. Do I recommend it? No, but it'd be funny. Official, Golden Troop, Attack, Attack, Crit. Before I talked about one of the benefits of Farina is less of a need to run damage percent, what I forgot to mention is that it's doubly true for characters that can run Golden Troop. It plus Farina or Kazaha is so much damage percent, it stops making sense to run a damage percent goblin. Once again, if you don't have Golden Troop, you have other options. Thundering Fury, Gilded, Tenacity, and two-piece two-piece combos are still solid. Weapon, Stringless if you don't have a 5-star crit bow. If you think Fischl isn't enough Electro, first, why? Second, Lucky, because Lynette has a special infusion priority. Unlike other characters that prioritize Hydro on Electro-charged enemies, Lynette prioritizes Electro. So you'll have more than enough unless these jerks have anything to say about it. Kokumi, Clam or Tenacity, HP, HP, Healing Bonus, or HP. Stack, ER, and HP percent. Prototype Amber and TTDS are solid, but you'll want to put her after Farina in the rotation if you go with TTDS. I'm both disappointed and relieved that I can't think of anything else to say for her. Pretty straightforward stuff. On to rotations. 
If you're not on TTDS, start with Kokomi Skill, then use Farina Skill and Burst, Official Skill, Lynette Skill and Burst. If you're spicy with the C6 and Miss Splitters, Skill, Normal Attack, then Burst. Then Kokomi's Burst and spam the attack button like your life depends on it. And hit the dodge button when it actually does. If your rotation is tight enough, you should be able to reset the jelly. Once the jelly is off cooldown, repeat the rotation, but burst with Fischl this time around. Number 3, Fukokomon. It's Sukokomon, but the Su is replaced with Fu, Rina. Unlike Sukokomon, however, this team is actually fun because Kokomi has a hydro battery. Basically, you got your Farina with her pets, Kokomi with her jelly, Xiangling with her god, and Fischl with her emotional support bird. In Overworld, you just gotta hit the skill button on each character, and things just kinda go on their own. But we're here for this, so let's get to the characters. Farina is Farina, Kokomi is Kokomi, Fischl is Fischl. We literally just got done talking about all of them. I will say, hit Farina up with that fab for this one, for sure, and you'll get more mileage out of Tenacity and TTDS here on Kokomi. Another benefit of all that damage percent Farina gives is that every buff to base stats or EM you give your team through characters and weapons and resistances and defense treads on enemies goes a lot further. To the point where Nahida's Lamp is actually goaded in this team on Kokomi if you have it because everybody be reacting with something. So that just leaves the gluttonous one, Xiangling. She's hungry and it's for energy. So we're going to start with her weapons here. Catch or Fav. Engulfing if you have it, but if you have engulfing, you don't need me to tell you to use engulfing. Emblem or Crimson Witch. Generally, what I like to do is use Catch on Emblem and Fav on Crimson Witch, but you do you. Finally, thanks to Farina, Xiangling's main stats are kind of just, what's the best artifact I've got with the four piece bonus? EM attack crit, cool. Attack EM crit, also cool. EM pyro crit, also cool. Attack pyro crit, probably the least cool, but still cool. Prioritize ER and crit subs. If you manage to find all the ER stats in the universe, you can get away with running Dragon's Bane over the ER weapons. Start the same as the last, we'll assume you're running TTDS. Go Farina skill and burst, Kokomi skill, Xiangling burst, skill. If you're on fab, normal attack until she gobbles up those clear particles. Official skill, Kokomi burst, and do that thing where you hit the attack button a lot and the dodge button when you need to. Once her skill cooldown is at 3 seconds, swap to Farina and start over the rotation, but when you get the official burst to recast Oz. You'll probably have no idea what's happening on screen, but you'll watch the number of enemies defeated increase and feel like you're doing a good job. And hey, you know what? You are. You are doing a good job. Number 2. Quick Bloom. Farina, Dory, Nahida, and Sino, Alhatham, Kaching, or Raiden. I'm going to go with Raiden because I don't have Sino or Alhatham. And three Archons, shut up, Farina is literally all the parts of Folklore she didn't shove in the Oratress. And the Troll Doll is just too fun a party to pass up. Farina is Farina, Dory is Dory, but you might want to give her a healing bonus circlet. Nahida is Nahida, but you'll actually want to build triple EM if you gave Dory a healing bonus circlet. And you'll definitely want to give her Prototype Amber because, well, Dory is Dory. Then Raiden. You know what? Keep it simple. Emblem. Catch. ER. Attack. Crit. Could you min-max things with other sets? Sure, but it's Raiden. She's got two solid builds you probably already have if you've got her. One for damage, one for seeds. We want the damage one. So picture this. Nahida's Noble Phantasm. Farina stands. And Dory got her hands up channeling her power to Raiden. It's the most anime thing ever, and I'm here for it. Here's the rotation. Right in skill, free in skill and burst, not hit a skill and burst, Dory skill and burst, catch the particles, then right in burst. There's a lot of combos you can do from here. The easiest two being four normal attacks followed by a charge attack. Repeat that, and then two normal attacks followed by a charge attack. And also normal attack, charge attack, spam. Or you can just normal attack spam if you just feel like treating the attack button like it owes you money. Whatever feels right to you. 
There's actually a lot of room to mess around here to optimize stack generation, which buffs are active at which time, whether you want to start with Electro Charge or Quicken. This is just the one that made the most sense to me and had that flow that I like. Though Dory before Riding Burst, yeah, that's where it should be. At the tail end, like her little legs are struggling to keep up with everyone else. Before we get to one, we have some honorable mentions. A lot of these are better than a lot of the teams on this list, but I either don't have the characters, wasn't able to get the characters to a high enough level of investment in time for the video, or this abyss just isn't the greatest for. First, since we just got through Quick Bloom, other versions of Quick Bloom, and just most of Farina's Dendro teams in general. A lot of her great Dendro teams use Baiju or Yao Yao, and I don't have either. You might be asking, how could I possibly not have Yao Yao? She was free. Let's just say I really like Ningguang. Second, Noelle and physical teams. Farina was really the buff they needed. I tried to make Noelle work, but she's only C3 and my husk artifacts are extremely cope. So I just couldn't make it work. But if you've got a reasonably invested Noelle, she's everything you've ever wanted. Same deal for physical. With Electro Charge, you can still get your Super Conduct from your Electro unit. Then you've got Mika, who's got a lot more viability now, even outside of physical teams. Third, Freeze. You could spend an entire video just for Farina Freeze teams, but this ain't the Abyss for it. Funnily enough, I spent two whole days trying out different Freeze comps, and the best performance I got was on second half with bosses that can't be frozen, and one with a stupid amount of cryo res. I could have included it, but that team was more quote unquote freeze, and it used my C3 Yalan, so it's not a fair representation of the team's normal capabilities. If I don't seem like the type of person to go for C3 on a character, you're right, but I am the type of person to go for C6 on Lunette. Was that a wise decision? Not at all. Trying to get a C6 on a 4 star, their first banner is pain and no one should do it. Fourth, mono element teams. I guess everything that's not mono hydro technically wouldn't be mono element anymore, but my point stands. Farina's done something incredible. She's like a shadow clone of Kazaha in mono element teams. You can have a mono element team with Kazaha on one side and a mono element team with Farina on the other. I did wreck this abyss with the mono element team, but once again, C3 Yalan, so it didn't seem fair to include. Lastly, Nuvolet. I just don't have him. I will get him, but I was saving for Farina, so I couldn't risk it on his first banner. Farina's awesome with him. Nuvolet, Farina, a VV Shredder, and some off-field damage dealer like Fischl that doesn't require normal attacks is goaded. Not child. That's stupid. Like, if you want to, fine, but he's definitely not the best like some have claimed. Plus, if you've got child, he's one of the best characters in the game, put him on the other side. Having a fourth character in your team increases everyone's energy requirements. You'll get bigger numbers on Nuvolet, but you'd be better off with someone that contributes their own damage slash generates particles for your team, or possibly even just not running a fourth character to lower everyone's energy needs. It's easy to forget that hyper carries don't make up 100% of your team's damage. It's normally around 70 to 80%. Don't forget about that 20 to 30%, just because their numbers aren't quite as big. She's a really flexible character, so this definitely isn't an exhaustive list, but I'd be remiss if I didn't specifically call these out. Now, onto my favorite Farina team. Number one, Sunfire Overbait. My god, this team is satisfying. It uses Raiden, Farina, Bennett, and Jean. Don't let anyone tell you Farina and Bennett don't have synergy. Sure, he doesn't buff her, but you're going to want to put him later in the rotation anyway. On top of that, Bennett does have synergy with Jean, and Jean is Farina's best teammate, and I am prepared to decompose on that hill. First, a quick explanation of Sunfire. Bennett applies Pyro to your character. That Pyro makes Jean go brrrr. Bennett also increases attack, which allows Jean to front load more healing, and lets you get stacks right at once for Farina. 
Gene, Farina, and Benny are all kind of energy black holes and writing kind of resolves that issue. It's like they're all meant for each other. Before we get in the builds, I feel I also got to mention that Farina, Benny, Gene is kind of like a new national comp where your last option is just a flex on fielder. It's insanely versatile. You can throw in a pyro animo or dendro carry and allow Farina to forward vape, which is something I never thought I'd say. You've got three of your team slots filled up, but it doesn't feel limiting at all. That last slot is as flexible as your district representative when lobbyists start throwing cash their way. Another option is to run Dory instead of Benny, but I already have two teams with Dory here. Raiden is Raiden, Farina is Farini, Benny Instructors. EM is the one thing everyone in this team can benefit from having more of. ER Sands, high attack weapon, preferably high attack ER weapon like Sapwood, which is also more EM. Gene is going to want triple EM VV. Attack builds with healing bonus are still fine, but with Benny, you've got enough attack. EM weapon, she's going to be swirling. She's going to be overloading. She's going to be vaping on occasion. This isn't just a soup team, it's a soup kitchen, and Gene is running it. Rotation is pretty simple. Raiden skill, Farina skill and burst, Benny skill and burst, Gene skill, ideally on an electrocharged enemy to double swirl. Her burst will do the pyro swirl. And burst. Ride and burst and pick whichever riding combo you're best at. This is very circle impact and you've got a lot of overloads. So this is going to perform best against bosses, but my God, does it perform excellently at that task. Plus look at all the colors. Pro tip, if a fully invested team causes this many colors this quickly, you know it's good. Feels crafting at its best, baby. So yeah, there you go. Any teams I couldn't get around to that you're enjoying? Sorry, this is so late, by the way. I was originally going to do 10 plus teams, but I got pneumonia and have been in bed for about a week now. I just don't have the energy to push out that kind of video. Also, sorry if I seem a bit grumpy or unhinged. Cytokines from the immune response and all that. I'll try to make sure to tone it down a bit for the next one, but not the lore videos. People seem to like it when I go a little bonkers for them. Anyways, like, subscribe, click the video on screen. I'm gonna go potato for another couple of days. Bye.